7 Minutes for Moms. This is Kate Richter. I'm coming at you 7 minutes, 7 minutes a day for how we can make the gospel real at home so that our kids have the best chance at identifying Christ in their life versus living out their carnal nature for their life here on earth. Uh, we know it's a fading flower. We know it passes fast. So let's utilize our time well, right? So here we go. Seven minutes, guys. Today, we're talking about uh, thoughts and how every thought can be taken captive. How do you do that in reality with your kids? We, as moms, can see from their countenance what they're thinking, what they're going through, what they might be contemplating. We can see it before they even say anything, but guaranteed you will be able to hear what is going through their mind when they speak. And as parents, busy parents, sometimes we want to go right after the thing that we hear or the thing that we see and not the root of it. And I guarantee you, if you will allow the word of God to work in your home by using it to edify, correct, and encourage your kids, then parenting becomes easier. Uh, more of a joy, what God intended it to be. He said kids are a blessing. When when our quiver is full, we are blessed. Um, so obviously, if we're stressed, we're missing something, right? It doesn't mean it won't be challenging, but it's not to be stressed. It's to be a blessing. And the Lord bless us in a cursed earth because we're his kids. And he said to multiply, to be fruitful is a blessing. So when our kids have thoughts that don't line up with the word, how do we help them identify it? And you think, my kids are four. They're not going to do that. My kids are eight. They're not going to do that. Yes, they they know. You can help them line up really quickly. So our four-year-old, does that thought that you're having about yourself, about your brother, about you, that just came out your mouth, does that honor God? Does that honor your brother? Does that honor mommy and daddy? No, it doesn't. So we can see that that thought would not be from God. Do we want that thought? No, we don't. So let's throw it out. And the best way not to have that thought again is to find what, out what God thinks about our brother or about our mom or about this situation. And we go to the word and we find out, this is a sample of our table talk that we do with rootbible.com. Um, we find out what God says about that. And you're like, they're four. They won't sit for that. They absolutely will. And I can, I can go, all right, what's the one we're going to do? We have a coloring book of scriptures. So we'll go to the coloring book of scriptures and we'll be like, for as a man thinks with himself, so is he. So if you keep telling your brother he's so mean, how's he going to think about himself? Is he going to think about himself mean? And then what is he going to become? He might start acting out what he thinks. So we're not going to speak that over him, right? And so how do you think about yourself? Do you think you're having good words? We want to think about ourselves the way that God thinks about us, don't we? Well, how does he think about us? John 10, 27 says that we're his sheep and we know his voice. So let's ask him, right? What did that just take? You're watching the clock. It took 40 seconds. And you know what? She doesn't always stand still as I tell her that. She doesn't always look me right in the eye, though we work on that because we talk about that's a way to honor someone. But the point is the seed is going in and the seed in itself develops fruit after its own kind. Genesis chapter one, read it with your kids. This is a promise. When you put the seed of the word, it will reproduce after its kind. That's why it can't return void because what you put in will be what you produce. So when we correct our children, when we encourage, when we edify, when we rebuke, use the word because the word will produce fruit after itself and allow our parenting to again be restored unto us a joy that the Lord has promised in his word it would be. But you know, when we eliminate him who made the promise from the situation of parenting, it's hard to walk in that promise when we've removed the promise maker. So how how do I do that with my eight and 10 year old? Uh, my 10 year old, uh, tonight we were talking at table talk, you know, and we were talking about, he goes, why would anyone not be able to go to heaven? And it goes back to Genesis chapter one, a seed within itself produces after itself. 
right? So if we're not producing after the seed that's been put in us, the seed of Christ, when we believe, when we get born again, we reproduce from that seed. If we don't, we'll be cut off. And we garden a lot. So I use that example. I said, but before we get there, we have the ability to de-weed and cut off thinking, wrong thoughts, wrong actions, wrong motives with the word of God before we would get to that point. That's why he recommends in his word, and we'll go to the word and find the scripture, that we judge ourselves, that we not be judged. Because if we can go after that wrong thinking, if we can go after those wrong actions with the word of God and allow his word to transform us so we can walk out a seed unlikened to itself, if we can put that word in and allow it to live and breathe and develop strong roots, then our thinking is going to change. So I don't just talk to my kids about, oh, you shouldn't say that. Oh, you shouldn't think that. Oh, you shouldn't do that. No, we've got to say why based on eternity, based on what we believe as believers, based on what the word of God says, we must bring that correction, edification, rebuke from the word that that seed, the seed of the word of God may produce after its kind in us in our children, and in our homes, making our job as believers and blessed parents, as the word says, easier and more joyful and to be walked out in everything that he's created it to be. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you tomorrow. Blessing.